When the idea of sequelizing the original Beetlejuice film was first mooted, Burton first enlisted the writer Warren Scarron, who had previously helped the director whip the scripts for Batman and Beetlejuice into shape. Scarron's screenplay, entitled Beetlejuice in Love, featured a Phantom of the Opera-type plot, in which Beetlejuice falls in love with a deceased singer. In the script, Beetlejuice meets Leo, a man who tragically plummets to his doom while proposing to his girlfriend Julia on the Eiffel Tower. When Leo enters the afterlife, Beetlejuice is able to escape back to the world of the living, where he pursues Julia. The afterlife of the original is replaced with a purgatory shown as a New Age Californian corporate nightmare. The dead are forced to sing in charity single supergroups and attend anger management classes. Hell is an inescapable and never-ending New Age cult of self-help. Beetlejuice in Love was one of Scarron's last projects. He was diagnosed with cancer weeks after completing his first draft in 1990. The talented and respected screenwriter's life was cut tragically short in December of the same year. The next idea for a sequel, initially pitched as Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, was the first collaboration between Burton and playwright Jonathan Gems, following Gems's uncredited work on Sam Hamm's Batman script. Based on Burton's original idea, set in the early 90s, the sequel wouldn't include Adam and Barbara Maitland from the original, but would see the return of various other characters, including Charles and Delia Dietz, daughter Lydia, and of course, Beetlejuice. Burton's plot, written up into a full draft, went like this. Lydia, at college now, visits the Hawaiian island of Kanuka, where Charles Dietz is close to finishing the construction of a new hotel and casino resort. Unfortunately, the hotel is being built upon the burial ground of an ancient Hawaiian ghost whose spirit is disturbed during the bulldozing of the site. Lydia falls in love with a local surfer, who is also one of a group of environmentalist protesters looking to kidnap Dietz in an effort to dissuade him from opening the casino. The plot is foiled, the protesters are thrown in jail. Lydia uses magic to travel to the afterlife netherworld. She finds Beetlejuice and recruits him to foil the opening of the casino, and to free her friends from jail. Beetlejuice agrees, and they return to the island together. Once Beetlejuice has won a surfing competition, he's back up to his old tricks. Giving Lydia a love potion, she becomes besotted with him, and in her transfixed state, the two prepare to marry. Lydia's boyfriend uncovers the plot, and when he tries, unsuccessfully, to take on Beetlejuice and put a stop to the wedding, Beetlejuice's mother, Gala, appears. Gala reverses the love spell, to the fury of Beetlejuice, who now goes into ultimate destruction mode. He transforms into a creature named Juicifer. He wreaks non-stop havoc on the island, transforming cars into metal wolves. He brings demonic statues to life. He conjures cavemen and skeletal dinosaurs from the ground, and summons the Easter Island heads to life. The terrified residents seek refuge on a nearby volcano. Lydia uses her own powers to summon a tidal wave that wipes the creatures off the island, along with the casino and new hotel. Otto chants Beetlejuice's name three times, sending him back to the afterlife. At the conclusion, Lydia and her boyfriend are reconciled, the island is to become a nature resort, and Beetlejuice, after accidentally drinking one of his own magic potions, falls for a girl in the netherworld with whom he lives happily ever after. According to Jonathan Gems, both Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder agreed to star in the film, provided Burton signed on to direct. Warner Brothers, however, offered Burton complete artistic control over Batman Returns, and according to Gems, he couldn't turn it down. Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian was shelved, and in the years since, Burton has often expressed a sequel is a possibility, but would show little interest in the Hawaiian concept. Be a Beetlejuice too? I don't know. People keep asking me. You know, it's on, it's off. I mean, it's the one thing I've wanted to do for a long, long time. And by this time, you know, look, people either want to do it or they don't want to do it. You know, and Tim, Tim gets very busy, and then I get busy. So you know, it's hard to say when the two of us, because I really only want to do with him if he's involved in in some way. Uh, hopefully, as the director, that'd be that'd be the best. I said just. You know, because I love the character, but I, I want to just kind of t look at it from a fresh perspective and kind of see what he see what he comes up with. Have you been keeping in touch with Michael Keaton over these years? I, I, I talk to I see him every now and then, but I you know I I, I live in London, so I don't I don't get back mm -hmm. to Los Angeles very much, so I didn't see him that much. But you know, he, he was such a great. That's like one of my favorite characters <laughs> I've, I've ever 
dealt with. So, I mean, we'll see what he comes up with. He's one of the first people that I ever, you know, that, that was so good at improv. I mean, I, that, that movie, I was very lucky to work with a lot of actors, you know, like him and Catherine O'Hara, that were very good at improv. So mm -hmm. that, that, that kind of set me on, on a whole new course. So, you know, I would love to revisit that character at some point. Because people always say, are you going to, are you, if they do a Beetlejuice 2, are you going to be in it? Exactly. And I would love to, Absolutely. except I think ghosts don't age. And if they don't, with Alec Baldwin and I, one of us has aged, you know. Well, but know. that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried I won't be in it because ghosts don't age. Well, you know, I think the audience will, will be accepting and forgiving, even, even though ghosts don't age. Well, there's CGI. Age. There, there is. is. Yeah, yeah, come you on. Know. We never know. I put right? on a curly brown wig and... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. What's happening with the Beetlejuice sequel? <laughs> you know what? I don't know. And I'm not being coy. Have I get you this, this. thought about saying Beetlejuice three times and see if the movie just appears? <laughs> <laughs> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice! Yahoo! It's showtime! Seth Graham Smith, the writer of Dark Shadows, rebooted the idea, with Keaton and Ryder said to be keen on returning. The Graham Smith script amounted to nothing, but the idea, much like Beetlejuice himself, refuses to go away quietly. And in 2015, a new writer, Mike Vukadinovich, would begin working a brand new screenplay and concept. Ryder acknowledged there's been some backlash amongst fans of the original, worried that Burton tampering with the 1988 title could be a mistake. She says, It's a very precious movie to a lot of people, so there are a lot of people saying, Don't do it! Burton, as recently as this year, refuses to rule himself out of a new spin on the material. And as unmade projects go, Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian is one of the more curiously fascinating. Graham Smith spoke with Shock Till You Drop in 2017 and told them that Michael Keaton was still excited for the project to commence, saying, It's a reality in the sense that I met with Michael Keaton last week. We talked for a couple of hours and talked about big picture stuff. It's a priority for Warner Brothers. It's a priority for Tim. Right now, I am writing an animated movie for Tim based on an idea of mine. Then I adapt Unholy Night. The third, I am hoping, is Beetlejuice in terms of writing schedule. Here's what I say, and I mean it about Beetlejuice. I mean, the Beetlejuice is one of the things I'm producing at Warner Brothers and one of the things that I'm supposed to write. I met with Michael Keaton about it. We sat, we talked. I met with Tim about it. We sat, we talked. And they all said the same thing, which is, if you come up with the script, the story, that is worthy of us actually doing this for real, and something that you know, it's not just about cashing in, it's not just about forcing a reboot or a remake down someone's throat, then we'll think about it. But I don't want to make Son of Mask, you know, and, <laughs> and especially not with a movie that means so much to me. So where it stands now is I'm working on some stories. I, Tim is waiting for me and, you know, waiting very patiently for me. But um, if, if, we, if it's not the thing we all get super excited about, then why do it? When Warners started talking to us about it and came to me and said, you know, what do you think about it? I said, there are two things. One, it's not, it cannot be a remake or a reboot or anything like that. Forget it. It has to be a straight, pure sequel. If it's 27 years after the first movie, then 27 years have transpired in the movie. I was going to say, it's not a reboot, remake, it's a straight sequel. The second thing I said was, no Michael Keaton, no dice. So that's a lot to ask. Of it, a studio. It really is. And so, look, I would love to be the guy who cracks it and, and infuse it with life, but I'd rather, I, as much as I want to be that, I'd much rather not be the guy who destroys it. It was radio silence until the subject regained focus during Burton's press junket for the Disney live-action feature Dumbo. When USA Today asked Burton what's going on with the Beetlejuice sequel, Burton said, nothing, nothing. But is Beetlejuice 2 going to happen? The director was asked. I don't know, I doubt it, Burton said, and waved off further questions. Keaton, during the same press tour, would refer to Beetlejuice as both lightning in a bottle and unique during a Dumbo news conference. Larry Wilson, one of the original Beetlejuice screenwriters, would comment on the sequel discussion, saying, The bottom line is, Tim Burton and Michael Keaton are not going to think about a Beetlejuice sequel unless it somehow catches the energy of the first film. And that's not easy. Beetlejuice really was lightning in a bottle. But there have been discussions since it really shocked everyone in 1988. And in terms of Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, wiser heads prevailed. Thank God there's a level of integrity here. I don't sit around in a bathrobe watching Beetlejuice and waiting for a sequel.
As things stand in the present, the sequel doesn't appear to be any closer to production than it did 30 years ago. Personally, I think, had the sequel been made back when it was originally conceived, with the returning director, another Danny Elfman score, and Michael Keaton back in the black and white striped suit causing mayhem, then it no doubt would have most definitely been worth a trip to the video store. <laughs>